In April 2010, Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein was summoned to the Hill by Senator Carl Levin. Martha Stewart can go to jail. This would be the biggest showdown between Congress and a major Wall Street banker. Blankfein was unapologetic. Clients know our activities and they understand what market making is. Do you think they know that you think something is a piece of crap when you sell it to them and then bet against it? Do you think they know that? The nature of the principal business and market making... Lloyd Blankfein argued, it was perfectly okay that at the same time we were selling securities to you, we were betting on the fact these securities were going to go down, but that's okay because we're a market maker and we're allowed to do that. That sounds like fraud to me. In the first half of 2007, Goldman Sachs told long position CDOs to its clients, right? We sold, uh, we reduced our risk. So you were selling CDOs at the same time you were taking short positions on the same CDOs? The best way of reducing your risk is to sell what you have. Just doesn't make common sense. So you're telling me that not one banker, not one executive on Wall Street, not one player in this entire financial crisis committed provable fraud. I mean, I just don't believe that. I just don't believe that. Around 400 mercenaries from the private US security firm Academy are involved in the operation against anti-government activists in Ukraine. That is according to a report in the German newspaper Bild am Sonntag, citing an intelligence source. Earlier, the German intelligence service told the government about the mercenaries' involvement in the operation. However, it's not clear who commands and pays the private military contractors. Academy, previously known as Blackwater, gained no notoriety after alleged atrocities committed during the Iraq war. The firm had earlier been accused of involvement in the Ukrainian crisis. An unverified video that supposedly shows US private contractors operating in the city of Donetsk emerged in March. The security company has not commented on the latest revelations, but previously denied any involvement in the Ukrainian crisis. I'm now joined live by foreign policy expert Daniel McAdams to speak more on the subject. Hello to you. What are your thoughts on these recent revelations? Why would the government in Kiev involve foreign mercenaries? Well, I think you have a lot of uh, Kiev-appointed oligarchs in the East who are very, very wealthy, and they have an interest in uh, trying to quell this unrest. What's interesting about these last two stories we've seen about U.S. involvement is they've both come from from major German newspapers. And it makes you wonder whether the Germans are not getting nervous that the U.S. is pushing this too far. We saw, for example, last week in Bild, uh, a story that uh, dozens of CIA officers were involved in helping put down the, the, uh, the unrest in the East. And now we've seen this other story in a German paper. So I think under the surface, you're seeing a lot of uh, very uh, concerned German people and German businessmen for what's happening. What impact could the presence of these private contractors affect the situation in Ukraine, Daniel? 
Well, I think we've seen a change in the tactics of the, uh, the you wouldn't call them military because every picture that I've seen, they look like some sort of ragtag militia, very violent. But you see a change in their activities. They're burning police stations down. Uh, they're shooting. I saw at least three unarmed people shot today on YouTube. Uh, they're, they, it seems to be their, their purpose is to foment chaos and to destabilize the East. Uh, so they're not really about stabilization, but destabilization. Now, as I mentioned earlier, contractors from Blackwater were accused of atrocities in Iraq. Why would a company with such a track record be invited onto Ukrainian soil in the first place? Well, because they're not connected to governments. Uh, they don't uh, abide, they don't feel they need to abide by international law. Uh, they are uh, able to use extreme violence. We saw what happened in Fallujah. Uh, you saw a city decimated by these people. So I think that's uh, when you want to have muscle that's not accountable, uh, that's who you hire. Let's talk a little bit more about the Western reaction now to the developments in Ukraine. We've seen some disturbing images of government troops opening fire at unarmed civilians during the referendum. Are we going to see any condemnation from Western states, do you think? Well, as is the... the, uh, the common practice when the U.S. doesn't like a vote that's coming up. They've already condemned it beforehand. The State Department issued a press release yesterday saying that it condemned this referendum that was being held by, quote, armed separatist groups. But anyone with a computer and an internet can see that the armed <clears throat> organizations are, are not the people in the streets. As I said, I've seen at least three people killed today. Uh, the uh, these, these militia we're shutting down polling stations and, and shooting people. I think the U.S. State Department seems to be believing its own propaganda for some reason. It's funny that they did support an armed insurrection in Kiev where there was no election, but you do have a protest in the East. They're trying to hold an election. The U.S. condemns it. Now, the circumstances are not great for the elections in the East, of course, but they will not be any better for the May 25th presidential race. And just briefly, the U.S. and indeed the EU have said they won't recognize the referendum results. Why does the opinion of all these people not count? Well, the U.S. loves to support democracy, except when there's a danger of people voting the wrong way. Look what we saw in Egypt uh, not that awfully long ago. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it really is a hypocrisy on the part of the U.S. government. And I think it's, it's becoming more and more obvious to the rest of the world. It's damaging our reputation. Daniel McAdams, Executive Director at the Ron Paul Institute, we thank you for your time. This is the city of Lugansk. We are now inside the barricade, which has been set up around the perimeter of the square. People are on guard here, keeping watch over our city. They keep watch around the clock. There are no weapons or troops here. You can see for yourself the barricades made of tires and barbed wire. This particular section has been reinforced to repel potential attacks, which may come at any time of the day or night. What has our government, excuse me, this Kiev junta done to unite Ukraine? They've mobilized their army. Excuse me, but against whom are they mobilizing? Who are the aggressors? Where are they? I've made some pies, laid a clean tablecloth, and I'm waiting for this aggressor to come and capture me. When is he going to come? Then they disconnected our televisions. After that, they called us a diaspora, 
How could we be a diaspora? There are 8 million of us here who just speak a different language. 20 million, not 8. No, I'm talking about the number of Russian-speaking people here. How long are they going to bully us? I can sing a song in Ukrainian. I can recite you a poem in Ukrainian. What do you think about how Ukrainians and Russians get on together? We're all Slavs. We have to live in peace. We're brothers. We shouldn't fight each other. We're one people. We're all brothers. My homeland's behind me. Russia is our homeland. I have an aunt in Russia and friends in Novorossiysk. We can't go to war against each other. I don't even like to use the word. This is the 21st century. How can two Slavic peoples go to war? And what are we supposed to make of today's order from the so-called Kiev government? The so-called Kiev government gave the order to kill their own people in Slavyansk. How is it even possible? I don't know what to say. They don't care about the Geneva Accord. Fascists. There are OSCE monitors wandering about all over the place. But what's going on? I can't figure it out. None of us can. Who is in charge of this madhouse? We were just getting on with our lives and not bothering anyone. If they want to join the EU, that's fine with us. We're not against the West. But we've always been friends with Russia. The Russians don't interfere in our business, and we've always got on well. We've no reason to quarrel either with Russia or the West. So why send in troops? It's just ugly. This is our home. We've got a culture and a language of our own. What right do other people have to come here and start laying down the law? Both my grandfathers were killed in World War II. I'll never sing glory to Ukraine, glory to Bandera. I hope they get the message. All those responsible will have to be tried at The Hague. Why send troops here? They should be arresting all those terrorists in Kiev instead. All of the presidential candidates, the military junta, the Nazis who gave orders to kill their own people. Just because their culture and their views are different. I'm just standing up for myself. I'm not a politician. Here's our Kalashnikov. Yeah, it's the Kalashnikov, the latest model. That's our automatic. We don't have any other weapons. Yarosh, head of the right sector, is assembling a hit squad called Donbass. Once it's assembled, he's going to target us. We're just unarmed people who are simply trying to protect our legitimate interests. He's made an announcement promising to pay ordinary soldiers $1,000 and officers $5,000. Why so? Because there's injustice going on in our country. There was a coup, an illegal takeover of power. Naturally, the new authorities are setting up their own rules. Anyone who disagrees is removed by any means possible, either put in prison or killed. These are their rules. Да, 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 да
греха мне доводи, Ты понимаешь, сейчас люди гинутся, тебе и автомат не помог. Да вытаскивать их из того танка. Глуши машину! Сзади люди спереди люди! Пацаны, не трогайте! Не трогайте! Не трогайте! Не трогайте! Давайте без крика! Какая у вас задача? Сиди, подожди! На славян! На славянской машине сидите машину. На славянской машине. На славянской машине. Глушить наших пацанов. На славянской машине. На кого стрелять собрал? My name is Natalia Safonova, and I live in the city of Krasnodon. When the revolution began, the miners kept working. They were working until a few days ago. Yesterday, on April 22nd, at 9 p.m., a demonstration began here, in the Young Guard Square. Today is April 23rd, and it still hasn't broken up. Please tell us, how do you feel about the right sector's actions in Ukraine? You could call it Nazism. Are you afraid of Nazism? Of course not. Why would we be afraid? Not all the miners around Donbass have risen up yet. If the whole of Donbass rises up together, it'll be game over for everyone. Do you know that a soldier was killed in Molodogvardis for refusing to fight? This is just the beginning. Yeah, right. This is just the beginning. But how long will it last for? Well, I've no idea. We're doing our best. Standing here trying to put an end to it. I can say one thing only. If the miners rise up, it will be worse than Maidan. A million times worse. Our people in the Lugansk region are Russians in their hearts. Our people are Russian at heart. They gather here and chant, Russia. I'm sorry, but they wouldn't be able to use money to bring 10, 20 or even 30,000 people together to shout, Russia. And they wouldn't be coming here daily to bring us porridge, eggs and financial help, you see? The point of our activity here is to represent the interests of the people. If the people say so, then that's how it'll be. That is, we do what the people say. And if they say otherwise, that means we'll do so as well. Ракеты, что ли? О, Катюша! Это град, Радчик, Катюша! Катюша! А что не собираться? Колонна с машин 30, наверное, блин. Ну, это от, от Мариуполя сколько? Километров 60. Танки, танки. Ой, там ты шо? Пожалуйста, скажи людям, стола оставляет в машине, выходит туда под стенку. Для чего? Это не все со столами готовы. Стрелять по нам. Какие на готовы? Там, блин, не. Две минуты, они горят. Все, Пусть выходят, пацаны. Мы говорили, что они едут, блин. Куда они ел? Со столами, не уедут. Милиция приедет, заберет столы. Наишникам в багажник сложить автоматы, боекомплект, хай уводят. Почему? Командир, давай приказ. Молодцы, пацаны, что так поступили. Молодцы, ребята, сдавайте, сдавайте. Что за оружие нормально, молодцы. Молодцы. Больше проконтролируйте, чтобы оружие не пошло никуда. И не ездите сюда за столами. Не слушайте, не слушайте, что вам говорят. Вы на народ идете с оружием. Мы с голыми руками стоим. Давай. Бросай, бросай. Максим, Максим. 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 Максим.